Good evening, YouTube. Welcome to another episode of FPL Family with me, Lee, and this is Sam. And Sam, another month goes by, another Watford manager comes and goes. Cisco, uh, whatever his name is, Noon Munez, <laughs> whatever his name is, is gone. Uh, in a non-shock to anybody, Watford have sacked yet another manager ahead of this international break. Are you shocked? Is this? Did you expect him to be the first one to go? <laughs> not that? I mean... I probably should have expected him to be the first one to go, <laughs> given what Watford like to do. But I didn't actually think he would be first because I think there's been plenty of worse managers out there so they far this season. They go through managers like I go through How hot dinners. It's them? incredible. Like the, the fees they, to get out of all these managers' contracts. The only the... thing I can say is they must hire these managers without a big monetary break clause. I, I can only imagine put, like, that that's the case. It, are they on like an eight month trial? <laughs> yeah, it's like, if we are not winning the league in your first six months, I don't care that you're middle of the season. That's not part of it. You're gone. Unless you are winning the Premier yeah, League yeah. in six months at Vicarage Road, you're gone. Sorry. And not that was good in enough. the contract when they were in the Championship as well. <laughs> Do you, no, so, next question is Is Kike Sanchez Flores coming back? For another stint at Vicarage Road. It's Ranieri, isn't well, it? Well, I've heard it's Ranieri. That's, that's the Which Ranieri are we going to get? The one at Fulham? Useless. Or the Leicester one. Or the Leicester the one. The one winning the league. Let's hope, for Watford fan sakes, it's the winning the league one. Because otherwise, and if he's not winning... what does Ben Foster and Backman? What? Who cares? What, it means? what does it mean for the likes of Ishmael Lassar and the kind of players that we're interested in? No, I, no, because I'm interested in Foster at four million. Well, yes. Well, yes. Well, we'll talk about Watford a bit later on, guys, as well as trying to analyse all of this weekend's action. And I use that word, Sam, FPL action loosely, because I'm telling you, there weren't a lot of FPL action this week. Unless you had Azpilicueta, unless you had Jimenez, unless you had Salah captain, it was a bit of a dull affair you know what's this really, week, wasn't really it? Not a lot me. going on. I mean, I spent a lot of last week... With the weighing scales between Rudiger and Aspilicueta and Rudiger oh, and Oh, don't even go there. Me too, I did, yeah. I was I like this all week. I knew I was going to get one of them and I couldn't decide which one. And of course, <laughs> of course I got did Rudiger. did not go with Aspilicueta. <laughs> and, do you know what? Of all The last couple of weeks, in my head, I was just like, right, in my wild card a couple of weeks ago, I picked too many risks. I had Reese James, that went wrong. I had Torres, that went wrong. Too many risks. So I thought, right, this week, Lee, no risks. don't take a risk. Rudiger is the one. Don't take a risk on Azpilicueta mm. or anybody else. Go Rudiger. Oh, dear me. I should have taken a risk. Anyway, more on Chelsea a bit later on because they did look good. They did, weren't good for 90 minutes and Southampton did have their time. They had their moments yeah. in that game, without a doubt. But Chelsea, as champions tend to do or champions elect tends to do, they found a way to win. They were good again. They were good again, despite the Lukaku captain fail. Highly captain mm. uh, this game week. And, of course, we've spent, Sam, the last... Two or three weeks discussing whether Lukaku and Ronaldo, Lukaku, Ronaldo, should you have him? Should you have the other? Should you have both? Should you have whatever? And of course, after all of that debate is said and done, Sam, the answer is, of course, Jamie Vardy. That was the, that was the answer to the question all along, right? Ronaldo or Lukaku, the answer was Jamie Vardy. We all missed it, didn't we? I mean, I got him in there, so... Well, you got half an answer right. Well, more than half an answer right. A double-digit haul for him. And his new strike partner, Huang, two goals for him. We'll be talking about that yeah. partnership a bit later on. But if you did have Vardy in the last couple of weeks, I want to hear from you in the comments or get in the chat because that is a shout if you had Vardy for the last couple of weeks. Sensational. I feel a bit low down here. Do I look a bit low on the camera? You do feel low. I feel, low. A bit, I feel, I feel like, like I need to sit up a little bit. Can I? There we go. That's a little bit better. And perhaps I should... Are you slouching a Perhaps bit? I was a bit slouchy. I was a bit slouchy. I'm going to move this microphone a little... There we go. That's look, better, because you actually look like you're taller than me now, whereas before I looked I was, like I was... I was kind of slouching in the chair. taller than you. Maybe go. if I slouch a little bit, then... That's a bit better. It's I'll tell you why, Sam. Why? I'm tired. That was an emotional game at Anfield today. Took it out of me emotionally. What a game, though. What a game. Yeah. Good, wasn't it? The bit that you saw, of course, because you were travelling back from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium today. Didn't did, see I, all of the game. But you were there for the last 25, 30 minutes of the Liverpool game, which is probably the best bit. And I listened to the rest on the radio on the drive back. Yeah, um, yeah it was a good game. Thoughts on... Um, well, I choke. Thoughts on Son today? Little ray of sunshine. <laughs> little ray of sunshine. Do you know, when I went with... <coughs> oh, the, um, a good cough, sorry. Went with the little lady today. Yeah. And she, she said at the end of the game... Mummy, you can always rely on Sonny to try his best. Well, there and you I go. Thought, She's got a new favourite, hasn't she? In a nutshell, that is that <laughs> actually sums it up, doesn't it? Because you can indeed always rely on Sun. He well, there was he is. good I've today. There he is. I've got the graphics. See if on the, there we go. 
Put him is. as the graphic today. What's he today. doing? Why is he not looking at us? He's turned his back on us. Why has he turned his back on us? He's like, I've not come to you for FPL advice because you're both doing absolute rubbish. Oh, Instead, well, well, I'm just well. going to celebrate the goals from today. He played well, didn't he, son? He did, did well. play well. He and Lucas Moura are making a lot of difference. Kane was better today, still not great. Well, yeah. But better. But, you know, there were some decent performances out there today. Romero and, and Dyer, that was a decent performance at the back centre-back pairing with those two together today. Good. All right. Well, let's say hello to a few people. As usual, guys, we'll talk about some of the games, some of the FPL action. We'll talk about our teams as well and this rut that certainly I'm in a bit of a rut. You've had a you've had a reasonable week because you had Jimenez, right? right? So, again, as I said at the beginning, if you had Azpilicueta, Salah captain or Jimenez, you're doing all right elsewhere. It was a bit of a non-event. We'll talk about Brian and Brumo and Brentford in a little while as well. What a last minute winner for them, by the way. Yeah. What a role they're on, Brentford. Sensational stuff. Really, really good. And of course, got this nice run of fixtures coming up after next week. So I think it's Chelsea next week for Brentford, which to be honest with you, I wouldn't say I'd back Brentford in that game, but they can absolutely score with the likes of Brumo and Tony. But after that, fixtures get very, very good. So all eyes on the Brentford Community Stadium right now. But let's say hello to a few people before we get into all the games and the rest of it. A couple of super chats. Thank you guys for the super chats. Uh, Keza, FPL. Kieran is here. How are we doing, Keza? Hi, guys, he says. He left... Oh, you're going to like this, Sam. He left the captaincy on his player from last week. Sorry, which was which was Mo Salah. <laughs> what, a, what a stroke of luck for Keza. Sometimes, sometimes these things... Sometimes just go in your favour. Sometimes in FPL, doing nothing, uh, cares of FPL is the right thing to do. Uh, GoPal, thank you, GoPal, for the super chat. Uh, fifty-eight, three hundred ninety-six points total. So fifty-eight this game, which, by the way, good game week is a very good game week this week. Very good. Uh, Huang, yeah, Huang, nice, and Livramento off the bench for Tanganga and Christensen. Oh, there we go. Look at that. It's Huang and Livramento both coming off the bench. And you started Tanganga and Christensen. You got those two coming off. That go power is what you call a stroke of luck. Captain Kane, though, instead of Vardy, stroke Salah, and that uh, he missed cost a me. That he cost me, missed he a sitter today, and I can't even tell you. You know, in that, in, in Do you know the... what? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm really sorry, go power, because you've, you're in every week, and I love you for being here. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate you being here. You captain Kane. Got Huang off the bench for a fifty-eight. But so how does that happen? You know, in the, you know, in the um, that makes me mad as an FPR manager. By the way, I'm, I'm furious. You know, in, Kane captain Huang off the bench. You oh know, my in, God. is it in Infinity War in, or in Endgame where they where he says, "I've been through this," and they, there's like one one in like <laughs> so, fifty million. Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. You know when he says that. <laughs> That yeah. was Kane today. There's like one in 50 million chance that he misses is that shot. You probably haven't <laughs> seen it yet, actually. Oh my God, how has he missed it? So well, you're listen, unlucky with we've Captain We've had another Kane. super chat from Cy Burdett, who I think pretty much sums up the game week. He says, what's good, fine people? Hey, Cy, how are we doing? Uh, I've all the skill. Or I've, I've all the FPL skill. Not I, Cy. Cy has all the FPL skill and panache of a man who washes his car with a rolling pin and wonder why it's dented. A mere week. And that's... How I would sum up. In fact, but, I would say absolutely thank you to the 258 people that are here and watching because you would be forgiven for wanting to already start to look ahead to game week eight after that game week seven. But. Oh, there's a but. Okay, go on. It was a good week to have a bad week. It was a good week to have a bad week. And do you know what? It was a good week to have a mediocre week because actually when I look at your team, I think, oh, okay, well, outside of, outside of Jimenez, you've done very average. But. That Jimenez has boosted you. You only up. needed one. You only needed one player that wasn't Salah. That's it. That's this it. This week, and you've done all right. That's it. Uh, Keno twenty two. Very nice to see you, Keno. Is Swatkins in tonight? No, Swatkins will not be making an appearance uh, tonight. But but I do I'll want to say. Do, I do just want to say. Yeah. All week last week, on everything yeah, I went on, was Ollie was I score. said Ollie Watkins would score today, and I watched him score today, and I thought. I predicted that. Well, more on him a bit later on. But no, Ollie Swatkins. He's not allowed uh, in. He anymore. won't be allowed in tonight because the windows are all closed. Not only is it a little bit cooler here in the it's UK crazy. as we get towards the autumnal months, um, but I'm willing to take one for the team. I'm willing to sit here and sweat my ass off it's not because that there's hot. no window open just because I don't want any more bugs invading the stream like in the last couple of weeks. Um, Eddie Casey is in. Hey, Eddie, how are we doing? Uh, Josh is in, FPL Telling. How are we doing, hey, Josh? Josh? Good to see you, mate. What is going on, Josh? What is going on at Manchester United? I, listen... Why did Ronaldo get benched? We're going to start there in just a minute because I want to hear from the Man United fans in the chat, 
in the comments below, United fans, let me know what is going on at your club. Is that a... Here's a question for you. Yes or no, Sam, before we get going. Is not starting Ronaldo a sackable offence for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Is it a sackable offence? No. He seems oh, to be... No! He, he seems to be immune from being sacked. There's something going on there. If he was at I'm Watford, he'd be sacked by now. He... <laughs> <laughs> it's just Watford. It would last. No one lasts five minutes at Watford. Yeah, but he'd last. They could get there. Pep Guardiola, and he'd be there six months. Get rid of him. No release clause. Bang. Done. Did you see that PSG had no shots on target in their game? Did they really? Against Rennes. So probably P- Pat Poch might be available soon. That's a that's a weird tangent to go off, Sam. But oh no, only because everyone's getting sacked. So you know, get Poch in. Um, Azzy is here. The Smiths, 1986 Kingdom FC is here. Sam Jones, how are we doing? Alex Jones. All the Joneses are in tonight. Uh, who we got? Adam Carroll, 41 points, up to 41k. Very good. So 41, that's an okay score, I think. But 41k is a really nice rank, mate. Really good indeed. Uh, ben Holland is here. Nice to see you. Uh, who else have we got? Martin Tricky Swartz, one of our long-term patron supporters. Martin, good evening to you, sir. I hope you're well. Uh, as is Gaz, he's in, one of our long-term patron supporters. Nice to see you. Siddharth is here. Mark uh, and Mick Lusmetz and a whole host of you guys. So guys, welcome to FPL family. Hope you're all doing well. A quick shout out for our patron, patron.com forward slash FPL family. If you like what we do, if you like listening to us on a Sunday, if you like listening to our nonsense on the podcast, hello podcast listeners. Um, <laughs> we'd love for you to go and check us out on patron.com forward slash FPL family. Come and support us over there. And in return, we'll give you some bonus podcasts. We'll give you the opportunity to take part in our monthly competitions. Um, and a whole host of stuff. And actually, I've just realised I've forgotten to do something for tonight's live stream. Do you know what I've forgotten to do? The manager of the month? I've forgotten to do a graphic announcing the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Sean Thorpe, manager of the month for September. So, Sean, forgive me, there is no graphic. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, this is perfect, Sean. Um, But Sean Thorpe, round of applause, please, for Sean. He is a long-term patron just long-term legend, actually. Long-term Sean's been patron. with us for a very, very long time. It's always lovely when a long-termer yes. Yes. wins it. And I must admit, when Lee said to me, manager of the month <laughs> for September, I was like, who was it? And he was like, Sean Thorpe. I was like, oh! Not only that, but Sean is a brilliant character in our Slack community as well. So Sean, uh, sensational. Do you know what he picked as his prize from kicking the balls? Because, of course, as you guys know, if you take part in our monthly competitions, you get the opportunity, if you win the league that month, to have one of these wonderful signed goodies from Kicking the Balls that you can see on the uh, on the back of the ball here. And, of course, you can hit the links below and find out what else you can get from Kicking the Balls. But do you know what Sean picked? Go on, what did he want? A picked, he picked a signed Alan Shearer shirt. Ooh. Blackburn Rovers, 1995, <laughs> I think it was, from when they won the league. Amazing. A signed Alan Shearer shirt is on its way right now to our September manager, Sean Thorpe. So well, we guys, did a video with him. Are you doing a video? Um, I th- I haven't asked him the question yet, but uh, yes, I suspect Sean. Sean might want to do a video. I hope that he does, because that is one of the things you get to do as your prize if you are the manager month. You get one of these things, you get a shout out on the stream, but of course you get the opportunity to do your own video with us that goes right here on the FPL Family YouTube channel. So if you do want to check us out, if you want to take part in those competitions, you want our bonus exclusive Friday podcast, um, if you want to do one-to-one Zoom chats with us and have us talk about your FPL team, talk you through your FPL team and what you could be doing over the international break, that is the link to go to. And all the details are on the description of the YouTube video below. So, Sam. I've also just remembered, it's international break, which it means is. the next Ohana podcast for our patrons will be... Another Ask Us Anything. And Ask Us Anything. And Ask Us Anything, which will be interesting. Uh, Liam Healy, speaking of long-term patrons, Liam is in. How are we doing, mate? Evening, Liam He's had a Sam. great weekend. Uh, well, he actually said big red arrow. Oh. Big red arrow, down what? to 700k. Football, though. Uh, he will have had a... Did Bristol City win then? Yeah, he's had a good weekend. Bristol wise. City, Liam Healy, absolute big Bristol fan, so he'll be buzzing for that. But unfortunately, Sam, in FPL, a big, big red. red arrow, down to 700k. Press the wildcard button at 11.32. Been far too passive so far this season. The only way is up. So there we go. Liam looking to like be a bit more aggressive. I like that, Liam. I like that. And by the way, 700k, mate, is absolutely fine. That is a reasonable... Listen, we are... What are we in? Seven game weeks? We, are, we haven't even done, what, a th- quarter of the season yet? There is plenty of time if you're in the sort of 700k bracket. And by the way, you won't be shocked to hear whereabouts I am. I'm about the 800k bracket, but I'm not panicking. There is loads of time to get up to where you need to get to. Let's have a look at these games, Sam. And I do want to talk about the sackable offence, in my opinion, that occurred 
from at Old Trafford. Manchester United won, Everton won. And I tell you what, Everton could absolutely have nicked this game. What is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doing? Dropping his biggest goal threat, Ronaldo, and his biggest creative threat, Pogba, and his biggest signing of the summer, Sancho. I looked at that bench at the beginning of the game and... Everton must have been looking at that bench and looking at that first eleven. It must have given them a boost. Is it a, is it a fact now that Ronaldo and we saw this at Juventus? He was not happy. Well, yes, but a lot of the rhetoric that I saw in the Man United forums was, well, listen, when he played for Juve, he didn't play three days in a week. You have to consider that this guy needs managing. But I tell you what, his face did not look like. He needed managing when he went off that pitch. He was furious. He was furious. If so, looks could have killed, well, Ollie would be dead. Well, so what are we saying about Ronaldo now? Because all of a sudden, is he, is he in the rotation risk bracket now? <laughs> I mean, I, that's a serious question. <laughs> it's a serious question. I mean, this is Ronaldo, the most expensive player in FPL right now. And we're just now discussing whether he is a rotation. I honestly don't know what that was about at the weekend. I was so shocked yeah. well, when I saw the team sheet. Well, Ben Holland's in the chat. He says, yeah, Cavani is hardly Joe Linton, Lee. Ronaldo can have the old game on the bench. Well, Ben, I don't disagree with you, and Cavani is a good player to come in, but therein lies my question. This is an FPL show, right? Well, I suppose Are we, we have... right to be selling Ronaldo now? Because he's a rotation risk. Well, the thing is, I suppose, up until this point, we haven't really had... Because Cavani hadn't been fully fit and available, had he? So I suppose there was that element to it. There wasn't really anybody to play there unless he played Greenwood like he was doing in the beginning part of the season. Yeah. I must admit, as a Greenwood owner, when I saw Ronaldo was benched, I was quite pleased because I was thinking, well, maybe thinking, this okay. is going to be a good thing yeah. for Greenwood. It was not. Um, well, he didn't move back into the middle, did no, he? No, he stayed Cavani out there. there. Yeah. So it's made Greenwood a total non-option now, in my opinion. Like, mm. I'm looking at him now thinking, well, bye-bye. Hello, Mbumo. Um, but Right. With Ronaldo, I think it's much more difficult because a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about how do you fit Salah, Ronaldo, Lukaku into a team. The last three weeks, suddenly those conversations are, well, do we just go back to having Salah? Yeah, I want to get to, I want to, get to the chat here because I know we have a lot of Manchester United supporters that follow us here at FPL Family. So I do want to hear from you guys because... You know, from what I was seeing on Twitter, there are a lot of exasperated United fans. Yeah. You know, and Mick Lusmet, thank you, Mick, for the comment. Trust in McTominay and Fred in that midfield. We'll get Ollie sacked. Well, herein, well, in this game was absolutely a demonstration of why Manchester United needed the sort of player that Decore was Do for Everton at the weekend. That this was in part because he looked at that Everton squad that he had available and thought, with no Calvert Lewin, with no Richarlison their attacking threat up top is... So maybe I need to pack the midfield because that's where their powers are. I I, not really, because if you're playing McTominay and Fred, then you, what are you saying? You're saying I'm being a bit more defensive. I'm going to play two holding midfielders. He but surely would I mean. have been better playing Matic there and letting the horses run free. Maybe. I, in, my, in my head, I was just kind of thinking, well, you know, did he did he play those two because he was thinking, you know, it's Decore, it's Gray, it's Townsend. So if I put some more defensive guys on those, that should then allow our attacking players to. I don't know. It was it was fascinating for me. I think Ollie got it totally wrong. Yeah, I think he did as well. Ronaldo already gone for me. Dominic Jervis says, uh, "Hey Dom, I've seen you for a while. I think Good to see you, mate." Fixtures turn now. Lukaku well. straight in. He says, "Ronaldo yeah, gone. Lukaku him. in." Well, we'll talk about him. A bit later on, um, but certainly you, the United fans are out in force. Um, Shurab, um, Shurab Karan, thank you, Shurab Karan. Hopefully I've said your name right. Apologies if I haven't. Decore domination in midfield. So for all that you want to talk about, we, and we can talk about United. I haven't finished on United yet. We will talk more about them. Um, but listen, Everton's midfield three, Decore Damari Gray, who, by the way, was man of the match for me. Unlucky not to get more FPL points. Typical. Yeah, but listen, I think you've got an all right pick there. Gray, Decore and Townsend ran riot with, with United, particularly mm. in the second half. I think there's a bit of respect came in the first half. But second half, Benitez sent them out there and said, we can win this. Mm. And when Ronaldo, uh, and I think he bought on, who else did he bring on? Sancho as well, who looked relatively lively, actually. So he bought on a couple of attacking players, Oli, on about the 60-minute mark, didn't he? Maybe just before. Um, and I watched some of the analysis on Match Today, and this was absolutely true, was that at times United were attacking with a front four. 
And what happened was that front four, they like to attack, but they do not like to turn around and track back. And what happened was that four... Gareth Bale-esque. Well, the, 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 that four was not turning around and tracking. So, of course, there's a big gap then between that front line and that midfield, that McTominay and Fred. Yeah. And Everton just exploited it. And we've seen it time and time again so far this season, where United turn into this team of individuals. And that was my overriding feeling. And, and listen, I'm, maybe I'm biased. United fans, come at me in the chat if you need to. I, I really want to hear your opinion on this because it's affecting how what I'm going to do in FPL. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. But United are turned into a team of individuals. Oli threw on a couple of big players in the hope, that's all it was, not strategy, the hope that there would be some bit of magic from Sancho or a bit of magic from Ronaldo. Well, there's or a bit of magic. players you could get hope, you could get magic Yeah, from. but that's not going to happen every week. You're not going to get lucky. They got lucky against Villarreal and he come up with the goods right at the death. Yeah. It's not going to happen every week. And Everton is not a team that are going to necessarily crumble like that. I thought they were good. You don't have any United, fa- United players in your team no. now, right? I've got no. two still. Because... Well, I've got Shaw, right? Oh, you kept Shaw this week? Yeah. So, But he's gone. I mean, I, United defensively, I, I still think Luke Shaw can be an all right pick, but I, I, I didn't necessarily have them down for clean sheet after clean sheet this year, United. No, but no, what I had Luke Shaw down point. for was a, an assist or two yeah. every now and again. Yeah, yeah. But he's not even coming up with that. No. And he's got this sort of niggly shoulder thing as well. And I just... I've had enough of Luke Shaw. They'll be my two transfers out this week. Luke Shaw and Greenwood. They'll you think both... the two United boys are out? Yeah. Interesting. And they're taking both okay, out this week. Because I've got to bring back Trent. When, when he, if he's if he's back, yeah. then then Trent's coming back in for Luke Shaw. Um, and then, oh, just Greenwood. I'm just going to take him right, right down. Because then I'm going to have so much money in the bank to go up to whoever I would like with that Yotta place the week after. All right. Let's have a look at a super chat. Thank you, VSG1, for a very, very generous pink super chat. Ooh, thank you, VSG1. Thank you. Very kind of you. Very kind of you. Um, 35 points with a minus four this week. Listen, it is that sort of week. Yeah, it it's is. A t- it's a very, very difficult week. Unless you had Dave or Jimenez Dave. or Salah captain. Who puts Dave in the list of must-haves for this game week well, before the game? Well, listen, he was one I was thinking of. We were both thinking of him. Oh, we both um, did. VSG1 is thinking of swapping Ings for Jimenez with the one free transfer available. Your thoughts. P.S. Sam must be delighted after that Spurs win. Nuno in, he, said, he or she says. Nuno in. I am. Um, well, we'll talk about Spurs a bit more talk in about a second. Ings in a minute when we get Ings to Spurs game. for Jimenez. Uh, let's talk about Jimenez when we get there. But that, that for me, feels like a decent spot. I mean, I must admit, without talking too much about the Spurs game yet, Danny Ings was... Yes? Invisible right. today. It was almost like he wasn't Watkins there. Watkins carried the charge, did he? Yeah, I mean, in the first sort of half... First 25 minutes or so, Aston Villa did start really well, but Danny Ings just never really was... He was never really in the right places. He was never really doing quite the right things. Watkins was in far better positioning and doing far better things. So, yeah, absolutely. To go to Watkins makes a lot, a lot of sense. Yeah, Okay. let's see some of the other United comments. Martin Tricky Swatch. Um, Ollie is playing moments football. Yeah, that's, that's a really nice way of putting it, actually. I did see that on Twitter, actually, as well. This is a... He's just waiting for moments rather than creating an environment by which a moment comes about. He's just waiting for a bit of Ronaldo magic, or a bit of this magic, or a bit of that magic. What's really frustrating with that, though, is that in the first three game weeks, that wasn't the case. It's almost like since Ronaldo's arrived, he expects him to have magic moments. Yeah. but Because in in game weeks one to three, they were creative. They were creating really great things with Greenwood up top. And since the positioning has all moved around to fit Ronaldo... It's almost like they've forgotten that and they just look at him as if to say, well, here you are. Okay. Okay. And, I, and you know, there was a moment, and I think Josh has alluded to it here, there was a moment towards the end of the game where um, I think Ollie's seen kind of smiling and laughing with Scott McTominay towards the end of the game. And it's just like, it's not sending the right message to the team, to the fans, to anything really. And, and Fred in particular, I, I honestly, this guy, how he continues to get a game is beyond me. That He's absolutely bossed for the goal, where Damari Gray just sort of, just was stro- just stronger than him. Yeah. Just stronger than him. And you can't do that as a, as a CDM. You've got, to, you've got to win those balls. You really have. Um, Everton, for their part, though, let's have a look, Sam, at the Everton fixtures going forward. Because one of the things we said in game week one was the fixtures are really great for Everton. They've got a really good opportunity to get off to a great start. Yeah. But after the first six or seven game weeks, it gets a more, bit more difficult for them. Yeah. Um, and there's no question that it's not easy going forward. They've got West Ham and then Watford. So a couple of home games coming up. 
Then they go away to Wolves, Spurs, and then Man City. So it is towards the more difficult end of the fixture ticker for Everton. But it's not horrendous. So how do you feel about Damari Gray, particularly after his performance this week? He's looking like a hold, isn't he? I would have thought. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to sell Damari Gray. I mean, I look at the the fixture against West Ham. Well, we've seen that they can get done today. And then, obviously, Watford. Well, who knows what who's what for that's going to even be by the time we get there. Spurs can concede goals. There's opportunities, I think. I'm going to sneeze in a minute, but there's opportunities <laughs> um, for for Everton to, to still get returns because they are playing in a way that maybe Oli isn't. Benitez has got his Everton playing as a unit and they're playing as a team. And those three, in Decore, Townsend and Gray in particular, have struck up a really nice partnership. Decore is like... In beast mode at the minute, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. We're seeing the decore that we saw at times at Watford. And again, we didn't see it all the time at Watford. No. But at times in Watford, particularly when he was playing a bit more advanced, he was unplayable. Yeah, he was. And Benita seems to be harnessing that, that yeah. side of decore at the moment. It's good to see. It's, it's good to see. He's playing very, very well indeed. Um, so I think my point is... Decore and Townsend get the FPL points, but if you're a Damari Gray owner, no hold. hold tight because he was excellent in that game and he deserved to get the FPL points. Um, let's discuss the uh, the Jimenez move then. So Wolves two, Newcastle one, another defeat for Newcastle. I don't know what it's going to take to get Steve Bruce out of a job at Newcastle, but goodness me, nothing. They are looking more and more like whipping boys every week, and the who, who would go there? Uh, That's why they won't well, sack him. Who would good go question. there? Yeah, good question. Absolutely no idea. Maybe for, Munez might now. For Wolves' part, though, Huang and Jimenez, that's a partnership that seems to be developing quite nicely. Huang with his third goal of the season already. or He was off the mark a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And Jimenez in particular. Talk me through Jimenez now then, because up until a couple of weeks ago, when he threw that... I remember seeing it vividly on the screen. He threw his headband off. As if to say, and I don't know whether that was almost like a bit of a symbolic moment, whether that was a moment where he was just like, right, screw enough. it. This is enough. I'm letting this headband dictate how I approach football emotionally. And this kind of symbolic chucking of the headband has coincided with actually some really great form. And the Mexican is absolutely flying at the minute. He is hot stuff at the minute. And he's in your team. So talk us through it. I'm really enjoying owning him. Two weeks ago when I wildcarded, there was a lot of rhetoric and I remember getting a lot of questions about why on earth are you keeping Jimenez? He's not really shown anything. And I was like, I've just... The fixtures are nice and I've got a feeling that he is starting to find his rhythm. He's starting yeah. to find his form. And it felt like it was coming, yeah, which it has. But it also has come with him playing up top with a partner, which we've never really seen at Wolves in the past. It was always... Well, no, we, we have with Jota, right? Well, yeah, but that was a long time ago before he obviously left for Liverpool. But the two of them together were good. And then, obviously, we had a period of time where it was just a one-man up top. Being no, Adama Traore and Jimenez, which was one of the most potent partnerships last year. No, but year. not up top properly. T- no, because Jimenez was out for most of the season last year. <laughs> right. Not up. They weren't up top playing two up top, were they? Traore tends to play in behind um, or on the wing. But I, I, I just... I feel like with Huang now, they're playing together as a front two, a proper front two. And in doing that, one, it's given Jimenez, I think, a bit of a kick up the bum because it's suddenly a bit of... He's not the only one that's going to score goals at Wolves. Yeah. And secondly, I think it's given him a bit of a... I don't know. The fact that there's two of them there together, there's a there's someone around. So they're looking for each other. There's a connection there, which with Traore, there there has been the balls in from the out from the wing, of course. From Traore, we see that regularly, but they haven't been they haven't been connecting since Jimenez has come back from his injury in the way that you would have necessarily wanted them to to score goals. Well, something that I noticed in this game was interesting, and I and I wonder whether it's something we're going to see more of with Jimenez. This kind of dropping deep and getting back to create in the same way, and I, let's not compare him to Harry Kane, right? But or, no, or he's way Firmino, better. really. But it's like uh, I noticed that a little bit this week. I don't think I've seen it enough. I haven't got enough data yet to say this is going to be a trend. But Jimenez coming back and creating, drawing defenders into him, and then letting the the, the wider man go Great on assists. behind. And Huang was doing that. He was getting in behind. Yeah. Um. And the goals were carbon copies of each other. Actually, there was there were Jimenez picking it up, creating drawing players through to Huang and Huang played it across the goalkeeper. Now, mm. could the goalkeeper have done better 
On the second one, maybe, maybe. But let's not take nothing away from Huang. They were two great finishes. Now, given that this guy has come into the league with a little bit of... I think there was a little bit of mystery. I don't think a lot of people knew about Huang coming in, him coming into the Premier League. But I remember when he went to Wolves, there were a lot of Liverpool fans saying, and obviously I'm part of the Liverpool community and forums and stuff, a lot of Liverpool fans saying, this is the player we should have signed when we signed Minamino. This was the player we should have got Huang instead. Right. So he's coming into the league with a little bit of a little bit of a reputation. Okay. Um, obviously not done it before in the Premier League, but now I thought, what, three goals already in this team with Jimenez, a very intelligent player creating around him, under a new manager that seems to be showing a bit of faith for him. And the reason I'm, the reason I'm waxing lyrical about him is because you haven't got to pay a lot for this guy in FPL. He's 5'5", no. five five, isn't he? And, and at, at the beginning of the season, you weren't going there, of course. When when it was a... No, we didn't know anything about you it. You know, when we wildcarded, there wasn't, back in the day... Um, there wasn't the opportunity necessarily to go Huang because he wasn't getting regular starts. He was coming on for bits of time there. And yes, he'd scored, but he wasn't getting the regular minutes that you would want, whereas Jimenez was. But now I think you have a choice to make because Jimenez is, in my opinion, will always be royalty when it comes to FPL because of what he was doing in seasons gone by. And we're starting to see that again. Yeah, We're starting to see it creep back in. But... If Huang continues to offer what he is and they're regularly returning together, which is what we saw from Kane and Son last season, there's scope to go both, but there's also scope to just go Huang because it saves you some budget if you want to go bigger elsewhere. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. He's definitely one to look out for. Definitely one to look out for. And the Wolves fixtures um, don't look too bad going forward either. It's Villa, then it's Leeds, Everton, Palace and West Ham. So it's very much middle of the road there on the ticker, but they don't look too bad. So if you wanted to go in on your wild card on a Huang for 5.5 million... Why not? I think that's absolutely fine. I think that's absolutely fine. Um, let's go back to the game then. Anything to say about Newcastle other than perhaps we ought to be targeting them now? They do seem to be conceding a hell of a lot of chances. And I noticed actually that Sky flashed up a graphic on the screen during that game and they were they were bottom. They were bottom for a lot of key defensive statistics. Attacking wise, they're okay. They're in this. They'll be better with they're Wilson. They're sixth or seventh or eighth, right? Because they've got some maximum. They've got players that can attack. And when Wilson comes back, that will only bolster that, I'm sure. But defensively, they look real bad. And it spurs up next. So is this? Is a, it? Well, you got to play them next. Yeah, first game after the international break. It's Newcastle Spurs, as far as I'm aware. So does that make you feel like you want a Son or a Kane or something like that to come in? Because Newcastle wants to be targeted now, I think. Well, that was the plan, wasn't it? Mm. My plan was Son. That was where I was going with the saving money. Get Son. Minus well, that's what four. Matthew Wilkinson is saying. He's saying, Captain whoever Newcastle play. And Sam Jones is saying, yeah, Son captain versus Newcastle, question mark. So and I must admit, definitely one to have a look at. And I guess uh, we'll talk about Spurs, I'm sure, a bit later on, but... There's certain people I wouldn't get, but Son isn't in that category. Okay. He, he He's a decent option. Okay. It's just that he's 10 million. If he was 9 million, it'd be easy. All You'd right. just buy Son. Okay, thoughts on the Wolves' defence? You and I have both got Samedo. Do we feel like we've had the wall pulled over our eyes a little bit here? Is he looking Is like that some not... some kind of weird pun? No. <laughs> the wall, not the Wolves, put, no, pulled no, over our eyes. No, no, like sheep and wolves. No, 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 no. I'm, well, I'm starting to feel like maybe Samedo was the wrong thing to do because not only is he not really not you know Wolves are not delivering the clean sheets but he's he not really getting into those areas that I thought he might do when I saw him a couple of game weeks ago I'm willing to I've got other things to do in my team yeah. it's not a priority yeah. but he's just starting to annoy me a little bit him and Luke Shaw um, so there we go that's the him end him and of, Luke Shaw oh those are the two let's talk about Chelsea 3 Southampton 1 um, and a shout out to Mr Livramento actually who had a really really good game really good game team oh, on uh, listen, he's going to be on a lot of people's benches because that's why you buy him. But from a Southampton perspective, they are now top of the fixture ticker with Leeds, Burnley, Watford, Villa and Norwich up front. So there, I think, are five games where you could easily play Tino Livramento. Is there anybody else from the Southampton side... He's in my bus team. ...that caught your eye over the weekend? Um... Mr Armstrong up front? Yeah, Mr. Maybe. Ward prowls on penalties, although he's now suspended. Suspended, um, maybe. I don't think Armstrong's that bad a pick at his price point. I think he could be all right, particularly given the fixtures that we have coming up. Particularly with how poor Leeds have been defensively, although you know not so bad this weekend. But they have been very poor defensively. 
there was chat, wasn't there, of um, ailing needing some maybe minor surgery. So there's going to be opportunities and scope for people to score against them. So maybe Armstrong's not a bad call if you're on wildcard. I think the difference is that obviously Huang's a bit cheaper. We've just spoken about how much value he could potentially give you. So yeah. it depends on where you want to go. But for me, Livermento is the standout pick at Southampton. And I'm not sure how how many Southampton players you want. Yeah, I think if you're wildcarding this week, Livermento's your fifth your fifth defender. Just forget about but it. But you're it's... probably going to play him. Well, that's you what I mean. Fifth, that's what you, I mean. But you probably want to be able to comfortably bench some others as well. I'm not only playing, but I, you know, I'd have some, I'd have some expectations actually. <laughs> I, I don't, listen, of I, your four point, what is he now? Four point two. I, I bought him at four point oh. I think he's. You've I think he's four two in the game. What? I should have no expectations with this guy. He should be absolutely bench filler. But in the next five games. You want five clean sheets? Well, I'm expecting some returns <laughs> from this lad. I know I am, genuinely. And I will be playing him quite a bit, I'm sure of it. Um, but let's talk about Chelsea then. Um, oh, nothing Chelsea. for Lukaku. Although, Again. yeah, I know. So how do, you, how do you feel about Lukaku then? I mean, he did have one offside in the first which half. Would have which been a would have been a Rudiger assist. assist, I know. And then the, the one at the end, um, the Chilwell goal... How does he hit the post from that? I don't understand how Lukaku hits the post there. It's easier to score than hit the post. But anyway, he hits the post. How are you feeling about Big Rom then? In the same way that, you know, that the answer was probably not Ronaldo, as we've just discussed over the last couple of weeks. It does not looking like it's Lukaku necessarily either. But how can you sell him? Well, no, you're not going to, are you? Because you're stuck. We both bought him in on wildcard for this run that's coming up. You're and in a Lukaku rabbit hole now. Remind ourselves of the Chelsea fixtures. Which you can't escape from because the fixtures are... Yeah, they're great. And and as Scott Schrager is saying, Lukaku had plenty of chances. Stay firm up. I've got no thoughts to sell him at all, to be honest uh, with you. It's just a bit annoying that he didn't return this week because he absolutely should have. Yes, but the perma-captain thing is a discussion now. Well, now it is, yes. Because we sat here last week and said, well, you leave the armband on him for five weeks. Because you've that's got not the, next. That's not the case anymore, is it? And we see Mo doing yes. Mo things. Yes, yes, yes. So now I'm looking at Lukaku thinking, well, I'm not going to sell you because the fixtures are really nice and, you know, I'd be mental to sell you. But I can't see I'm going to trust you with the armband when Salah's got Watford. Game week eight, Chelsea travel to Brentford and Salah travels good. to Watford. So who are you going to captain? Salah. Me too, I think. Me too. It's maybe that... Livramento. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe Livramento. Not against Leeds. Leeds, for all that they are, they can score some goals. Um, but listen, it, it's Norwich at home in nine. I mean, listen, that is Lukaku triple captain territory. Never mind just normal captain. So hold tight on Lukaku. Don't, I wouldn't don't, trust Lukaku with my triple captain's armband. Do not worry about uh, Big Rom. He should have had points this week. Um, what are we saying about the the, the, the defensive situation, oh. though? Because a lot of FPL managers bring in Alonso. He doesn't get the start. He brings in Chilwell, which was bound to happen at some stage, I guess. Yes, and then he plays Hudson Odoi at the back. Which didn't work. Uh, no, was it um, not Hudson Odoi? Chalabar plays Chalabar back there. Who scored? Who scored again? Did well. So listen, it's it's still a little bit of a lottery outside of Antonio Rudiger. And I did notice actually Rudiger and on. Aspilicueta. I do think. Yeah. Okay. Rudiger and Aspilicueta will always be there. Yeah, probably. I mean, Aspilicueta is captain, isn't he? And he can week, play so... out on the wing as well, and he can play in the middle. Yeah. So I think he's going to be fine. Which is why those two were the conversation that I was having with myself. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, Rudiger, I noticed, I mean, obviously, as Pilaquetta gets the two assists. So if you had a straight choice between the two, it's looking on the basis of this week that as Pilaquetta probably worth a little bit of extra money. But I did notice a couple of occasions Rudiger going on these little adventures he likes to go on. And that's what I like about Chelsea playing with the back three is actually if you've got the back three there, one of them at any moment in time can go and travel with the ball. And there's no doubt that the best I think of those three are doing that. It seems to be Rudiger. Every now and again, he goes on a little Joel Matip style little (laughs) foray through the midfield. And and he almost sets up a goal for Big Rom if Lukaku could have just timed his run a little bit better. So... I'm not... Listen, I'm not panicking on Chelsea at all. I've got the two. Um, but if would you Reece go J- three? Well, if Rhys James is fit after the international break, I have the, I have the money to do Luke Shaw to Rhys James. Or I have the money to do Luke Shaw to as Aquera if I wanted to. So if I want rid of Luke Shaw, which is a big tick, and I want and I still have faith in the Chelsea defence, which is, which is still a big tick, despite the penalty here this week. Against then, Brentford? Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because they could easily concede one in that game, couldn't they? Well, Brentford will 
Brentford have no fear. They yeah. just attack teams. It's almost like they go, we're not expected to win, so why on earth would we not try? Well, that was their mentality against Liverpool, wasn't it? And it was their mentality against West Ham today, yeah. and they won that game. And it will be their mentality against Chelsea next week. Yeah. I can see Brentford scoring in that game. Yeah, I can as well. So I don't know if I want to be doubled up on the Chelsea defence right yeah, now. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. And there are obviously other good options elsewhere. And we'll talk about Man City in a second. But anything else on that Chelsea game that's catching your eye? Werner with the goal. Could have had two, right? Not for VAR. Not going Werner. I don't though, think you're you? going to go Werner, are you? No, are you interested in Mason Mount when he comes back into the team? Because surely he's going to be fit now, post-international break. No? I'm just a bit wary of Mason Mount because we've seen him be benched before. Okay. And that just puts me a little bit at, a little bit unease. Okay, the guys are saying, yes, agreed, Brentford looking good at the moment, Hungry for More FPL says. So, um, actually, Matt Henley, Brentford all over West Ham first half today. So, yeah, there's all of a sudden, this double Chelsea defence might not be quite the lock-in that we thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. Uh, Miena Sidham, thank you for the super chat. Hi, guys. I bought Chan in because he was in my FIFA Ultimate Team. So there we go. He's got Huang in from Wolves purely on the basis of FIFA Ultimate Team. Well, there you go. There you are. If you do your research and you play a bit of FUT, that's where you, can un- <laughs> you can uncover the FBL Maybe gems. that's what we need I love to it. do. That's what we need to do. A bit of FIFA 22. Bit of FIFA. Right. There we go. Um, so where else do you want to go, Sam? Let's go to the Spurs Stadium from today. So give us your view on the game. I've not seen any of it, of course, because uh, as the game was going on, I was watching the London Colney Colts under eights play today, and then I came home and watched Liverpool. So I know absolutely nothing about this game other than Mr. Son getting two assists and looked ex lively. Did what they I give it to? Did they give the goal to Mora in the end? No, the goal got taken away from Mora. It's two assists for Son and only one goal for Hoiberg. Yeah. Um. Some was impressive today. So actually, Aston Villa started the game incredibly well. For the first sort of 20 minutes, I sat there and thought, oh, here we go again. Yeah. Why have I come here to watch this <laughs> again? And then Hoiberg decided enough was enough and just took the game a bit by the scruff of Good. its neck. Good. And You've I, needed somebody to do that for I a few thought, weeks. And I thought, hello, Hoiberg. Welcome to the game. And, uh, and after that, Son was, Son was back to being Son today okay. he really did play like a man that genuinely wanted to be involved in the goal action he was making great runs there was a couple of opportunities where he really could have done better than he did and yeah. he was annoyed with himself Kane well well, well hold, on, hold on a minute then. so Son Newcastle up next a lot of FPL managers thinking oh, do I bring him in in my wild card maybe captaincy option is he worth the money though that's the thing with Son that's it's the, the price thing. point is so hard isn't it yeah because actually I honestly today thought that Son was great, but I also thought that Lucas Moura was excellent. Doesn't get any FPL points, but probably was a bit unlucky not to get that guy. I haven't seen the replay, and I was right level with it, but I was on the Lucas Moura side, so I didn't know if he touched it in before he touched it. But Lucas Moura was in a lot of the right places at a lot of the right times, and he's a lot cheaper. So... Do you know what? He's a, for me, he's the shining light for you this year so far. Lucas Moura. There hasn't been that much to shout about last few weeks, but every time I've watched Moura... I've been reasonably impressed. Even in the Vanarama Jaffa K Cup, he's been pretty good, Lucas Moura. Will you stop calling it the Jaffa K Cup? What is K it then? No one cares about it this is competition. It's the Conference League. You, literally no fans turned up on Thursday to watch that game. Do you know that there's a petrol crisis in the UK and people can't get petrol? And did you know <laughs> that it was like a typhoon in the UK on Thursday evening and it was the roads were flooded? How many in the stadium today? It wasn't sold out. But it was pretty full. It was pretty No one was too worried about their fuel today, were they, Sam? Well, we've all got fuel now. <laughs> no, we haven't. We are. That's the problem. No one... No, the fuel crisis hasn't resolved itself since Thursday. I got a tank of petrol. Oh, you got a tank of petrol. Well done. The fuel crisis is still on in the UK, guys. We're thinking about getting the army in, in case you're not abreast of the news, <laughs> to deliver bloody fuel. And you're saying that... Nobody went to the Vanarama Jaffa Cakes because of a fuel crisis. No, no one went to that game because they don't care about the Europa Conference League. Not even the players care about it. I mean, it's a bit hard. <laughs> you are the only person in the whole Spurs <laughs> ecosystem that wants this trophy. <laughs> no one wants it. Me and Son. Oh my God. Son wants to win a trophy. Son. Not that trophy. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Kim Minson does not want to win that trophy. He wants to win any trophy. He does not want to win that one. 
<laughs> anyway, it's um, ridiculous. So Sam and Lucas Moore, I actually thought played really well today. God, dear me. I'll tell you who else I thought played really well today. The defence. And they were a bit unlucky to concede that goal. Right. Romero and Dyer seem... <laughs> Spurs fans in the chat saying, we can't afford to be picky about trophies. We can't afford to be picky. <laughs> what it is you boys are still dining out we the, won the Aldi Cup a you few are years still ago. dining out the Aldi Cup from 1997 this unbelievable correct but oh, do you remember when we won me. the League Cup I had a bet on that game and I won it <laughs> it was Alan Nilsson and he scored the winner and I went absolutely mental that's all I've got to talk about how many years on are we from that come on talk us about the FPL so actually the game. back line I think Dyer and Moden if he continues to play them together they might be alright and I'll tell you who else is impressive from an attacking defensive point of view, was Royale. He was doing... Oh, really? Yes. Okay. He was doing reggae on things, right. but on the other side of the pitch, where we, obviously where he should be. Right. So we actually had two attacking defenders. Full back. So a bit of balance all we of a sudden in this balance. first team. Okay, interesting. Now, okay. I can't promise that Nuno <laughs> will play them all again next time. And that's the problem with the Spurs defence. Plus, it's the Spurs defence, so they're not going to keep that many clean sheets. But with Royale, if he continues to do regular... Is it regular, Royal or Royale? Has it got an E on the end? No, I think it's Royal, but Royal. I like to call him because he's like regal, isn't he? Like, he's important. Well, call him Royal, then. Don't call him Royale. He's Royale. <laughs> Why? First name, Roy. Second name, Al. Royale. <laughs> Tell me his first name is. He's from Brentford. What's his first name? I don't know. Roy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, he was... Atta- he was decent attacking and he put in some really good balls um, that actually if Kane could finish his dinner how about how success. about new boy Romero as well the big money signing at the back any good yeah paid alright alright okay paid alright and what about from an Aston Villa perspective we what? sat here last week and we were talking about target and cash the width yep. down the side there did Villa go into this game today with that in mind and yep. therefore that created a bit of space for Son was it a bit of their undoing today do you think a little bit yeah, yeah, they did attack. Right. They did for the first twenty five minutes. They attacked, and we looked scared. And then we, and then Hoiberg took it by the scruff of the neck, and then we looked all right. But they, they did attack. They did attack the game. Watkins led it a lot of the time. Cash and Target both attacked, though they continued to have that attacking threat. Right. Um, Cash took every throw in from my side of the pitch during the first half, um, and was probably a little bit unlucky that Danny Ings wasn't better. Than he was today because I think. What's up with Danny Ings? Is he not in an, uh, any of our FPL thoughts anymore? Is he Danny Ings? No, I, he, I didn't. I, I wasn't impressed with Danny Ings today, and I don't like to be too hard on him because he's a really good player. But I wasn't that impressed with him today. I kind of felt like he got a bit bossed out of it by Dyer and, and Romero today. All right, let's have a look at the Villa fixtures then. I've got a feeling they're not too. Yeah, okay, so Wolves, which is the Black Country derby, so that'd be a, that'd be blood and thunder on game week eight away at Arsenal. Who? <laughs> blood and thunder. Well, it normally is, isn't it? Bit of a bit of a Midlands derby. We love that. And then away at Arsenal, who are suddenly keeping clean sheets. West Ham, Southampton, and Brighton. So it's not too bad for Villa. So if you were on a wild card this week, to what extent would you think about having Ollie Watkins yeah, up I there? I would. I would genuinely. And the, th- and the reason I ask that question is because you're probably only going to have space for a Watkins or a Jimenez or an Antonio. If you were going to start ranking those sort of seven to eight million midfielders, where does Watkins fit? In that ranking. If I was starting again... Right. ...now, I would be tempted to go Jimenez and Watkins. No, Antonio. Yeah. but One bad week and that's it. He's no, out. it's not one bad week. I, I just would be tempted. I think we're seeing a resurgence in what... I, I don't know. Look, this is another one of my moments, potentially. But I'm seeing enough from Watkins at the moment that makes me think, with the fixtures going the way they are with Watkins being a bit more through direct and through the middle, because he, since he's been back, he's been playing in, inside with Danny Ings. And I actually think that that's been the detrimental effect on Danny Ings. Okay. It's worked for Watkins because they're playing together. But I, Danny Ings is used to being that man, isn't he, on his own up there. And he's not yeah. really getting that this year at, at Villa because Watkins is there too. Well, at least Watkins is playing up with him. I think I f- the fear for us as FPL managers was, was well, Ings comes in and Watkins, well, he's out on the left and yeah. he's, he's ineffective. But they do seem to be playing a bit more Together. centrally, the two of them. Yeah, yeah they do. Um, and I think, you know, the other thing to say about Aston Villa today is that they didn't start the game with Buendia. 
and obviously Bailey's out injured. So they were missing two of their most creative midfield players. So when they both start again, okay. I think they'll be all right. So whilst I didn't, wasn't that impressed with them today, after the first 20 minutes, I do think that there's scope to invest in Villa. Okay. All right, let's go to the game this afternoon, which uh, had us all on the edge of our seats. Liverpool 2, Man City 2. Great game. You really, were a bit really emotional, weren't you? Well, I was a bit emotional because certainly that first half, Liverpool were not the better team. Right. No doubt about it. Man City, I know you missed the first half because you were travelling back from, from from Spurs, but City dominated, absolutely dominated, and should have gone up, uh, should have gone into half time, at okay. least a goal up, no doubt about it. Liverpool weren't good. But whatever Klopp said to them at half time seemed to give them a bit more energy and a bit more belief. They were braver on the ball second half and they were taking more risks, educated risks, Liverpool in the second half. Right. Um, So obviously it was great when we broke the deadlock. Nice nice goal from Mane, really, really nice. Good to see him put one like that away, actually. Mm. Because I've sat here for the last few weeks, talked about how how difficult he's been to watch Mane. And don't get me wrong, towards the end of that game, there was a few times when he gave the ball away and invited pressure back on. I'm like, oh my God, this guy's getting on my nerves again. But he did take that goal very, very well. So props to him. Well done. But completely overshadowed by the second goal. The Salah goal was absolutely out of this world. And it deserved to win the game. That's not me saying Liverpool deserved to win the game. We didn't. I think a draw was absolutely fair. But the goal deserved to win a game. It was that good. And if you captain Salah, if you're Keza and you left it accidentally on Salah this week, fair play, 13 points for Mo this week. Looking... I, and I, I touch wood as I say because I don't want to curse him. He looks on a different planet right now, Salah. Mm-hmm. I honestly thought coming into this season, okay, he's another year nearer 30. Didn't have a great season. It wasn't amazing last season by his standards. How, what sort of Salah are we going to find this season? Mm-hmm. Well, I think he's had the summer off. He's got uh, the whole COVID thing, the whole no fans in stadiums is behind him and Liverpool as a team now. He is absolutely flying, Mo Salah absolutely flying so it's not a question of whether you have him in FPL but there is this question now of whether is he just the most reliable go-to captain every week if Liverpool have got a, t- a playing against well I was going to say if Liverpool aren't playing against a Chelsea or a Man City or a Man United you captain him but actually <laughs> he's proved today 13 points and he got the penalty against Chelsea the other week with an eight pointer didn't he he's just so reliable we said at the beginning of this season that when you look at the stats from last season, there was real value in a set and forget keeper, a captain for the entire season if you place it sensibly. Yeah. So if you place that captain's armband on Salah, over the course of the season, he will likely be the top scoring midfielder, probably, or at least up there with the top scoring players across the entire game. Yeah. Now, yes, that might mean that you miss out on a haul from somebody else elsewhere but he is that reliable that you can do it and he has proved in big games and small games that he can return yeah so for me I'll, it's very hard when he's in this form yeah to look to anyone else okay as Matthew Wilkinson is saying Liverpool need to get Salah on this longer term contract quick listen Matthew if it was down to me he can have whatever money he wants we are so lucky to have him at Liverpool what a fantastic player um Jota though Ugh. let's have a talk about Jota because there's a Ripped lot of to. FPL managers that have been considering transferring him out there were a few that transferred him out this week there will be wild cards brandished over the international break and there will be a lot of managers selling him and in previous weeks we kind of said okay well he's a bit unlucky Mr Sitter at least he's getting those positions no it's Man City today yeah um, but he didn't really have too many chances today that I could see clear cut chances but then nor did Liverpool really as a team are you worried about Jota now Going into this run. Let's have a look at the Liverpool fixtures going forward. Um, oh, I'm still on the fixtures page. Um, the Liverpool fixtures are uh, Watford obviously up next. And it's United away. That's going to be some game. Brighton, West Ham and Arsenal. What are we saying about Jota then going forward? The thing is with, with him, I when, I... when I bought him in, I bought him in at the time when Bobby was injured and then we we were both of us, I think, slightly concerned about how many minutes he might get today given how good Bobby Firmino can be at controlling a game. And in a big game like this, I thought that might be the way Klopp might go. But he still played Jota at the start of the game and, you know, bought Bobby on later. I think he got 60-something, didn't he? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's a difficult one, I think, because we know that he can score off the bench. We know that he can return points, but... 
he's not a priority out for me, particularly with Watford up next. No, I think he's a. I think he's an easy hold actually for Watford. But would you bring him in if you were wild carding? No, probably not. Mm. No, probably not. There are some other options there that I like the look of. But I still think that he represents really good value. 7-7. Seven, yeah. seven, and listen, he got the start ahead of Firmino today. So that's in that's that's good if you're a Jota owner. Are they both going on international duty? Um, I don't know. I'd have to have a look. Probably. But it was clear that Firmino was off the pace today yeah. when he came on. He didn't really affect the game too much when he came on. He was definitely off the pace. So you could see why Klopp decided to start with Jota. In a game that actually I thought Firmino would start... But he's obviously coming back from an injury. Klopp mm. didn't feel he was ready, whatever, right? So I can see why he went with Jota. So I, I think with Watford up next, it's an it's an easy hold, quite yeah. frankly. It's an easy hold. Um, there are a few of you in the chat asking about um, Curtis Jones as well. So a goal and an assist now. Got the assist today. Got the goal, obviously, against Brentford. Really impressive last week. Really good. Good again today. Starting to really come of age in that team. From an FPL perspective, my feel is that he is still deputising for Thiago. I still think there are other options in there that Klopp would prefer at first choice. I think Thiago is one of them. I think you have to be careful that Keita might just get a bit more, a few more minutes. And then you've got Ox kind of lingering. You've got, well, yeah, you're right to pull that face with Ox. Um, and then, of course, Milner will get minutes, although Milner is being used at fullback at the moment because we've got injuries there. We've had Robertson injured, Trent injured, etc., um, so I I don't think you want to go Curtis Jones in FPL, but the boy is playing very, very well indeed. Very well indeed. Uh, what about City then? Liverpool managed to get two goals against this famous City defence, um, but they had to be two very, very good goals. City and the way that they defend is it's very, what's the word? It, it's full of confidence. It's full of confidence. They do not look flustered ever. They don't really make mistakes. Mm. And the whole, the era of, I don't know, um, Ake and Mendy and all that nonsense seems to have gone. And they've now got this fairly settled back four that looks really, really good. Laporte and Diaz look solid as a rock. You've got Cancelo on this side. You've got Rodri in the middle that just comes and slots back in when Cancelo goes forward. They look good, don't they, City, defensively? And the next three fixtures look great for them. Yeah, I mean, and we said, didn't we, that, you know, the City defence, there was a lot of talk about it last week. And I think you and I both separately sort of decided that yes we we did want to invest in a city defense but not ahead of Liverpool but after Liverpool it makes a lot of sense to be going with Cancelo Diaz or Laporte depending upon which way you want to play the next it. three Burnley at home Brighton away Palace at home then it's the Manchester derby which there's only one winner of that at the minute um, and then Everton at home so the next five for City looking pretty good for defensive returns. And we'll talk about their attack in a second. But if you were on your wild card this week and you wanted to bring in a City defender or two, where would you go? I think I'd go to Cancelo, you know, now. I think... Oh, the... I think... Uh, yeah, I think absolutely Cancelo. In, in the past, I would have just sat here and gone, Diaz. Yeah. Safety, security. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. But Cancelo is safe and secure at the moment. He, That's great. He's playing every week. Yeah, yeah. He... Not only is playing defensively really well every week, but he's attacking at will every week. Um, even today, I saw him doing some attacking stuff. So, you know, it's not like... It's not. It's no longer a case of, well, you might get 15 or you might get naught. Suddenly you're in that regularly yeah. is going to be there getting you the six-point clean sheets, which are so important. I think what's great about taking a, a risk, if you see it as a risk, and I agree with you, I don't think Cancelo is a massive risk, but if you do Not see anymore. it as a risk, um, and, and say you've got a, you know an Alonso or a Reese James as well from Chelsea, and suddenly there's a couple of risks in your defence. And by the way, I think the way that I would play out a wild card is I, I'd have one, one of the risks from a yeah. team. So I'd have, if I've got Rudiger, a safe pick from Chelsea, I'd have Cancelo. If I had Diaz, I'd maybe go Reese James. I'd maybe just have one risky pick. Um but what's great about if you're on a wild card this week is you've got the Tino Livramento. You just he's back you, again. Tino unlocks it all. You, you stick him. him in there. He's great, Tino. He's four point two, whatever. If you haven't got him yet, get him in your team because for the next five or six he looks great. And even after that, when the Saints fixtures get more difficult, he's getting the start. Yeah, he, is, yeah. he looks great. He's attacking as well. So yeah. you might have a bit that's why I said about expectation with this kid. So you're four point two and he, and even even a Brandon Williams is fine, right? Didn't if you play want this week no, for the clean sheet. Yeah, so actually, I'll retract that statement, actually. I'd probably find the extra to go to a Ben White or somebody, right? Mm. But anyway, 
you've got a couple of really good options in Livramento and White that you could just stick in there on your wild card, and then you can have a Cancelo, Alonso, and Diaz if you want, right? Because those you have a little bit of risk, and you've got to find some space for Trent. By the way, anybody that took Trent out this week, did you take Trent out this week? Did you do the hokey cokey in the end? Yeah, hokey cokey. You did. Trent coming back but in next you're week. Right, Trent out. Yeah, he's, he's coming, coming back, in, back in. in. Okay, interesting. All right. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so I would go Cancelo as well, and if you want Diaz, that's absolutely fine. But Cancelo looks unless like he's right. unless Klopp suddenly declares that he's not not fit and available and then uh, and then I'll wait and bring him in the week after but yeah for now he's uh, he's coming straight back in again all right and a quick word on City offensively because obviously as a Liverpool fan I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wax lyrical about Salah but I noticed Sky Gary Neville gave the joint man of the match that's never happened before I don't think the joint man of the match to Salah and to Phil Foden and you cannot argue with that at all because Phil Foden was absolutely out of this world good today so good my draft team has Salah and Foden in it. Yeah, and I I've very much and Jesus. I very much enjoyed the Salah and Foden points that came today. Um, I must admit, I was really impressed by Foden today. Yeah. Like from the bit I watched, I was really impressed by him, and it was like, well, it, you wouldn't have known that he was just injured, would you? Like yeah, yeah, he yeah. came back and he was fully good again. Um, and I thought KDB had a good game today as well. Ooh, but did when you? You, yeah, I did. But mm. when you look at the price difference between owning Those Foden two. and owning owning KDB, yeah. there was not that level of price yeah, difference I, in I, performance. I disagree with you on KDB. I thought of all the City players, he he probably was the sloppiest. My today. concern he, though, he just gave it away a few times, etc. But he, I, he still played alright. I go back to the starting thing. And with Foden, that is my one concern, is that we've seen him have brilliant games, then get benched the next week yeah. under Pep. We don't, we've never really seen Foden consistently start in the way that Grealish has this season. Yeah. And that worries me. Yeah. I think, though, his versatility is going to play into his favour. Because Foden can play the false nine. Yes, he can. He can play left and he can play ten. He probably, of the, those three positions, least likes to play the ten. And in on the left hand side, I think that's where Grealish most naturally is. Yes. But up top, if they had a striker, and this was mentioned a lot today. And by the way, even if they had Salomon and Rondon up there today, they got a hat trick. They created so much, and they were in such good such good positions. They just didn't have that striker to just that finish it off. Wasn't a dig at Rondon, was it? It was not a dig at Rondon. He'd, he'd be great at City. Really, really good. Um, he can feel Foden can play there as well. So I think Pep will find a way to put him in his team every week. I don't think you should be too concerned. For rotation around Phil Foden, the others, yes, clearly there is a clearly there is a first team. Pep is starting to get his first eleven clear in his head. I think. Do you? And and, and it, yes, I do. And I don't think it includes Mares, for example. But and I don't has. think it includes Ferran Torres, for example. Oof. But I think it includes Phil Foden. I think it includes Kevin De Bruyne. And there are so he start. I think he's starting to starting to find his first eleven now. And Foden is in it. Well, I wanted to have great. found it. And be wow. playing Foden before I'll risk it. All right. Okay. Scott Schrager saying Foden, no bigger risk than Jota. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. And Aman Khan is saying, worth keeping Foden. Yes, absolutely. If you've got if him. If you've got him, you don't sell him. You do not sell him. Johnson Hemingway, Foden versus Burnley could be golden. I totally agree. Totally agree. I think he looks really, really good. Or Foden. benched. Uh, here, a player that England barely used in the summer. Absolute criminal. But that's a whole nother podcast, Sam that we don't have time to go into. Any other games that you want to discuss? We've gone through most of the games there. No, I don't. Anything else? To be honest with you, West Ham Brentford, I'd love to talk about, but I, I, the game wasn't on TV here in the UK. Um, and uh, I was listening to the Spurs game. It's a match of the day too, one for us. It's a match one. of the day. We need to have a look at that. So get in the comments below. Let us know what you thought of Antonio, of Tony as well. Interestingly, you've already mentioned that you might be going in Bumo next week or next yeah, game week. Yeah. I for sure have got my eye on Brentford. Probably not for next week because it's Chelsea, although I do like that fixture for them-ish. But after that, the fixtures for Brentford look really nice. Let's just have a look, uh, a quick look at the Brentford fixtures. Uh, there's the Chelsea game, but then it's Leicester, Burnley, Norwich and Newcastle. Okay, can score Goodness in all of those. Me, that Norwich, Newcastle with Burnley beforehand and Leicester, by the way, who have conceded two to Palace this weekend and they're not looking defensively that great. From nine onwards, Ivan Tony looks absolutely made for my Ronaldo team. Ronaldo for Tony then? 
Ronaldo for Eve Antoni. Who'd have thunk it, Sam? Who'd have thunk it? Let's have a look at our drafts. And we've got some new graphics this week, courtesy of Fantasy Football Scout. Uh, thank you, guys, over there for the new graphics. Are these in the members area? Where can you find these? They're in the graphics? new members area, yeah. So these are in the new uh, mobile-friendly version of the members area. But you'll also find a, a much, much bigger one. Um, which is on the desktop version. Okay, they need to shorten Alexander Arnold's name somehow. I don't know if we could just put T A A or something in there. I don't know. Uh, it's I mean, I'll, bit... I'll send it to the. Can you feed that back to yeah, sure. uh, Scout HQ, please? Sure. Can you go and get Southerns to change that? Wonderful. Right, game week points forty-one for me. A pretty average week, guys. Uh, Four hundred thirty-one points in total. Eight hundred forty-seven k. A small red arrow of six point nine four. It's one of those. It was. I, I went, if you'd have gone Aspilicueta? Well, yeah, it's ifs and buts and maybes, isn't it? I mean, if Lukaku was, you know, an inch more on side, it would have been a Rudiger assist, a captain, you know, goal. Uh, I just, yeah, it's one of those. And even though I was getting really excited about Salah, I noticed that he was pretty heavily captain. Yeah, so his, his effective ownership was over 100%. So actually, his 13-pointer hurt me a little bit, which was odd. But it's just a bit of a tale of woe, guys. There's nothing to shout about at the back there, as you can see. Um, Saka, Gray, Rafina, and, and Jota, nothing really there either. Antonio Lukaku, there was just no returns, no returns. Even the Sanchez it, ones, everyone owns yeah, him. Everyone's got Sanchez, everyone's got Salah, so nothing really come through for me at all, really. If only, I mean, four from Liverbento on the on the bench would have been really great. Um, but yeah, a, a very meh game week, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are feeling. Right, forty one feels very, very much average. So look, we go again, eight hundred forty seven k. Is it where I want to be? Absolutely not. But we're going to go into the international break. I'm going to think about where else I can differentiate this team. I've got problems going into next game week. Some problems going into next game week. I want rid of Luke Shaw. For, 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 I was going to say for sure. I want rid of him <laughs> for sure. Um, and I've got some money in the bank to do something with him. Um, but also Rafina might be an issue for me next game week. Because he's playing for Brazil on the 15th of October, which is the day before... It's an important day, that si- is. I know that's an important day, because that is your birthday. But Rafina and his Brazilian colleagues, I think I've got this right, guys, and you can tell me in the chat if I'm wrong, they play an international on the 15th. And of Do course... They? Well, the day before the Premier League's back. The game week starts the next day. So that is going to be a problem for Do the Brazilians really? travelling. I think that Oh, is well, we're definitely keeping Yota then. I think that is the case. For me, no, I'll be off. Uh, quite possibly. So there's obviously, guys, as we go through the international break, you need to keep your eyes on where all these players are going and coming and playing and not playing and what's happening. And I think Rafinha is one that you need to have an eye on for next game week because he might not be back in time. And if that is the case, then I'm going to need to look to my bench. I've got to hope that Alexander-Arnold has recovered from his little... What's injury. the problem? you got Livramento. I've got Tino coming on. What's the problem? Who cares? Tino, he's going to be in my first Who 11. Who needs Tino. Rafina? I won't, I won't, You've got Livramento. I won't be even playing Shaw. Forget him. I'm getting Tino in. So there we go. Uh, early thoughts on transfers. You've got two? Uh, no, just the one. Ooh. Just the one. But I've got a bit of money in the bank, so I'm considering... Um... You've got... Um, Ansaka looks like he's going to be okay, right? From what Arteta said at the end of the game. Seems to be okay. Yes, I think he'd be okay. Yeah, I think he'd be okay. Um, Luke Shaw's potentially the one that could go for a Man City player. Um, Cancelo? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Although I, I do want to get some Brentford in my team. P- possibly not for that Chelsea game. So therefore, I'm quite open to rolling it. And maybe, I don't know, maybe saving a bit of money. Because if I go from Shaw to Cancelo, I might just block my Richardson to Tony that I want to do. The game week after, because I just won't have enough money then. We'll do Rafina to Mboimo. Well, I'm not taking Rafina out because their fixtures are too good, and he's too good a player. And I, and I want Tony. I don't want Mboimo. I want Tony. So if I'm going to go Richardson to Tony, I possibly can't do the Shaw upgrade in the way that I would have liked. So anyway, lots to consider. There will be lots that goes on over the international break. So listen, you've got two weeks to think about it, guys. And if you if you're going to take one piece of advice from this, and I will be taking my own advice here, is that I'm going to be waiting. Yeah. There's no early transfers here. I'm telling you, tonight, I'm not getting off of this thinking, oh, here I go. I need to go and get on Cancelo before the price. If his price rises, his price rises. I'm going to wait the, uh, as long as I can through the two weeks and know what exactly I'm going to be doing. Particularly with injuries with players like Trent as well, I think, because Trent's still niggly. You need to just be aware of... And, yeah. and of course, over international break, players, unfortunately will get hurt. Absolutely, yeah. And as the guys in the live chat quite rightly saying, Firmino not called up to this Brazilian squad. Oh, well, there so you, no, you are then. About that. So Don't have to worry about him. There is, uh, maybe we're not as worried about, about Jota. Jota. Uh, so 431 points total for me. 
431 <gasps> points total no way! for you. So 46 points for you this week. We are dead heat. Uh, we are dead together. I bridged the gap. Points. You've bridged the gap with your Jimenez 10 points. Oh, Jimenez. Um, your overall rank is 30k higher than me. I don't know why that is. Um, perhaps your team has scored more goals or something. Or maybe it's alphabetical. Who knows? But your rank um, change of 10.26% this week means a green arrow. Thanks to Mr. Jimenez in, in, in for the most part. Talk us through it. I mean, it was a pile of nonsense apart from him and yeah, So that was, is basically what I've got to say. It was the same as me, absolute guff. It's an absolute yeah. tale of woe. But every time they went to Wolves and they said, Jimenez has got an assist, I saw my arrow go green. And yeah. I thought, Jimenez, I love you. He's still pretty low ownership, isn't he? Sort of less He's than a massive 10%. differential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was really enjoying that. Um, Livermento on the bench is annoying, but I wasn't going to play him against Chelsea. That never crossed my mind. It never crossed my mind to Captain Salah because I have both Lukaku and Antonio who the decision was. But to be honest, I was never really on anyone but I, I Lukaku. I was the same. I was the same. I'd not, not one thought, well, not really to go Salah over passing, Lukaku. Captain no, I had really. no thoughts on Salah. I had a passing moment about Antonio, but thought Brentford might be harder than they were. So I was always with Lukaku, yeah. to be honest. The only thing that's annoying is the Ruda Graspilaqueta thing because genuinely, as the guys in the Slack will attest to from our Ohana on Friday, I was so torn. And at that point when we recorded that, I was I was on the Aspilaqueta side of the fence. Were you? Yeah, and yeah. I said in it, I think I'm gonna go Aspi. And then I went Rudiger because ah. I got scared. And and it was a scared. It was genuinely was. I was worried that Tuchel might bench somebody. I didn't expect it to be Alonso, but it was. Okay. So, so um, early thoughts about what you might do with this? In ve- I mean, very early thoughts. No, I've got decided. Got so as long as nothing happens over right. international break, I've got two transfers. It'll be Shaw to Trent and it'll be Greenwood to Embuemo this week. That'll be my okay. two free transfers. United Exodus for your team. Shaw United and Greenwood Exodus. out. And there is a slight possibility that I'd take a minus four. Oof. A mini wild card going on. Okay. Who would the f- the third transfer be? To bring in a little ray of sunshine. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, son in against Newcastle. So who would go and make way if that was the case? Um, I'd lose Jota. Jota would go. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, there we go. 46 points. We are... Seven game weeks into the season, and Sam and I are on exactly the same points. 431. There's been ups, there's been downs, but all Left seven rights. We go into the second international break of the season, and it's all square. I'm 431 points each. So there we go, Sam. That is the tail of the tape from game week seven. Talk the folks through where you can expect to see us this week. You'll see us both on this week's FPL show. We're in. Um, are, we po- are we recording next Sunday during international break or not? Um, I'll might give have a up. week off actually might have a week off in which case you'll also see me the following Thursday on the FPL show where Ooh, you've got back to back weeks I've, I've got back to back weeks I've got a very busy whoop, whoop. Thursday that Thursday because I'll be going into London straight after for the Football Content Awards oh nice um, okay on that that Thursday evening um, we will be on podcast as well I'm not sure if it's this week or next week but you'll find us on a podcast we'll over the international break what else is happening? Some videos coming on the channel. Why should people subscribe? They should, de- yeah, definitely. Um, so tomorrow, uh, uh, well, before I get there, tomorrow I'm also recording with the Premier League um, some stuff on Wildcard. So that'll Are be coming you? out on their channel. Yeah. Look at you mixing it up with the big cheeses. Just drop that in casually, didn't you? Oh, well, before you subscribe to the channel, I'm just, you know, happy to be doing a video with Premier League tomorrow about know. Wildcard options. Okay. Yeah. No biggie. No There'll also biggie. be... <laughs> Mic drop, walk out. Do a Spurs. Um, there will, <laughs> there will also be um, what? Just is so that just you were so casual with it as well. It was so casual. Ah, oh, just just in a few videos with the Prem. No big deal. Just so one what? video. <laughs> it's really right. one. Um, God, and I'm then taking a piss now. I've lost my train of thought entirely now. <laughs> and then what? What was I talking? Oh, on I our know. channel. On our channel this yes. week. There will be multiple videos. So obviously there won't be a jammy. Yeah, you can't say, when I say why should people subscribe, you can't say, well, because I'm doing a video with the Premier League. So the second... That isn't going to be on our channel. 
So the second part of International Break, the Jeremy Pick and the Top Points Picks videos will return. But this week, I'm going to do a couple of videos. The first one's going to look at potential wildcard drafts because obviously... There's a lot, a of, lot wild of wild cards yes, out there. Yes, so yes. I'm going to do some wild card drafts and put them out as a video. Get them in the comments um, as well. If you're doing a wild card this week, I want to see it in the comments. Let us know yeah. what you're doing. So there'll be a wild card video that will probably be out on Tuesday morning. Um, on Thursday morning, I'm also going to do a video on the premiums and which ones are currently Ooh. the best picks. Because nice, obviously okay. that's quite a big talking point. So that'll be out on Tuesday and Thursday. Vardy is the answer, by the way, to that video. Vardy. But if you have anything that you particularly want discussed drop it in the comments and i do read them as you'll see from the top points picks video which did change this week on the basis of the comments we had yeah so do put it in the comments i will come back and we'll potentially put a video out on that that's well. a good point actually tell us what you want to see on the channel guys we do you do your jammy pick video you do your top points video we do this live stream we have a good giggle and a waffle and talk about our crap we're doing in fpl but if you want to see some content from us and you think actually i've got an idea for a video that would be good. Let's do this. Guys, let us know. If mm. any of the patrons want to contribute to that, get in the Slack, tell us. Or guys, get in the comments of this video. Let us know what you want to see on the channel. If we want to come up with some new ideas for things, for videos, uh, here, right here on the FPL Family channel, let us know, guys. And let hopefully a Manager of the Month video as well over International Break with Sean. With Sean. Yes, absolutely with Sean. So there we go, guys. Well done in game week seven if you got into the 40s, the 50s. I've seen some people in the 60s, which is an incredibly good score for those that captain Salah, rightly, whether you meant to do it or not, Kieran FPL. Um, <laughs> well done if you got those sorts of scores in game week seven. Good luck. Have a nice deep breath over the international break. No early transfers, guys. Hold those transfers back. The information is going to be important to us over the next two weeks. Leave us a like before you go if you enjoyed the stream. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to FPL family, and we'll see you on the FPL show this Thursday. Cheers, guys. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you.